Hey traders, welcome to Quantsap. My name is Varun and technical indicators are something that a lot of traders use on a day to day basis. But there are thousands of different technical indicators which can confuse a lot of new traders. So today what I have done is simplified and I am showcasing two indicators in a pair which can be paired for a very effective trading method. Okay, so we are talking about the two indicators which are Bollinger Band and RSI. So since market currently is one directional and market is currently on a bull run, in that case what we need to identify is reversals. So I am going to explain a strategy which will help you identify reversals in the overall market in any script on a daily chart. So this will be a positional tool. So it can work as an intraday tool as well. Right. So intraday as well as positional both is fine. So I am about to explain that. OK, let us start once again. So this is web.quantsapp.com. OK, so I am on the web app since I'm on desktop. If you're on any mobile platform, the link is in the description. You all can just go and install it from the app store. So the link will redirect you towards the app store. You can just go and install Quantsap. OK, so uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for the immense support that you guys have shown. So your love and support always means a lot to me personally. So keep those comments coming in, keep those uh, likes coming in and make sure if you're new, uh, make sure that you subscribe and turn on the bell notification. All right. So let's open charts. So I'll just go to the analyze section and under charts, you will find charts hyphen order and trade. So just open that tool. Okay, once I open this, you can see that this is a simple one minute chart that we have opened on Bank Nifty. I'll just set it to a one day chart. Just for example, okay, I'll get rid of all of the indicators that I am using as of now. Okay, remove all the indicators and all the drawings. Okay, I'll just set it. Okay, now this is Bank Nifty's one day chart that I have opened as of now. Okay. Uh, you can see there are candles, there are multiple things. So indicators, let's add those indicators. So just go to the search option and search for Bollinger Band. So you can just type BB and you will find Bollinger Band. So I'll just open Bollinger Band. And similarly, you can just search for RSI or Relative Strength Index. So RSI is one of the most popular indicators when it comes to uh, trend identification or trend reversals. So it's an oscillator which a lot of traders use on a day to day basis. OK, so the settings for RSI are quite simple. You don't actually have to do anything. What I simply like to do is just get rid of the middle line. OK, that's all I do. So you all can follow along if you want. You can just save on the top right corner. There is a save option. It's similar to trading view. You can just open this up. OK, and Bollinger Bands as well. I don't generally you know, change it that much. Okay. So keep it simple. That is my motto. And that is how you can use this as well. Now, how to identify bottoms and tops in the overall market. Okay. So whenever, whenever Bollinger bands, whenever Bollinger band is close to price. So for example, let's say if I just zoom in around here, okay, I can see that the price is trying to pierce through the Bollinger band. Right around here, you can see that the price is trying to pierce through the Bollinger Band right around here. You can see so the price is trying to pierce through the Bollinger Band. So there is an upper band and there is a lower band. OK, if the price is trying to pierce through the upper band as soon as RSI crosses the level of 70. OK, so the level of 70 was crossed somewhere around here. As soon as RSI crosses the level of 70, if the low of this candle is broken, I will enter a bearish trade. OK, so that is how I know that a reversal is upcoming. So let's say on the next candle, the low was not broken. So I'll just wait there. OK, again, for the next candle, the low was not break broken. And here I can see that the previous day low was broken on 6th of July. So this is where I initiate my bearish trade. And you can see that market has fallen down from there. So Bank Nifty continuously made some uh, red candles after that. And what I generally like to do is as soon as price comes near the middle line or the moving average of Bollinger Band, that is where I will square off. OK, so that is how I generally trade, right? Uh, it is similar on the bullish side as well. If you're going for a bullish trade, it can work the same. So let's take this for example. 
So I can see that price was trying to pierce through the lower band of uh, Bollinger, right? The lower band of the Bollinger band, okay? As soon as RSI went below 30, if the high of this candle is broken, I will go for a bullish trade. So it was not broken on the next day. Here on the next day, the high was broken. So I will enter a trade somewhere around here. There was a nice gap up after that, right? So you can see that after that, Bank Nifty has given a good move on the bullish side. So that is how you can trade reversal based on that. Or you can square off when RSI comes to around 50 level. Okay, So there are multiple exit points. So for people who want to trade based on RSI or if they want to square off based on RSI. So RSI 50 is also there. Okay, Now, what are these indicators? How am I able to identify the overbought or oversold zones? Okay. Bollinger Band, I'll start by explaining Bollinger Band. So what exactly is Bollinger Band and everything? I'll explain, okay? Bollinger Band is based on standard deviations, okay? So it's just three moving averages. So one is the middle one, okay? One is the upper band and one is the lower band, okay? So there are three moving averages, okay? One moving average is based on 20 days or 20 candles price, all right, so it's the price moving average of the last 20 candles, the middle yellow line. The upper band is 20 days moving average plus two standard deviations. So standard deviation multiplied by two, that is the upper band. And the lower band is standard deviations multiplied by two on the negative side, okay? So that is how three bands of moving averages are formed, okay? So for people who do not know what standard deviation is, let's say if you are, uh, working somewhere. Okay, let's see if you are a working professional, I'll just take that as an example. Let's say your reporting time is 9 a.m. in the morning. Okay, so you have to enter the office at exactly 9 a.m. in the morning. Do you always enter exactly at 9 a.m.? I know I don't. So my time is always deviating. Okay, so sometimes I'll enter at 8.55, sometimes I'll enter at 9.05, sometimes I'll enter at 8.57, sometimes I'll enter at 9.03. So I am always deviating from my average time. So my average time will always be around nine because that is uh, my reporting time. So that is when I will enter the office, but my daily time will always deviate. So my entry to the office is always deviating. So how much am I deviating from my average time? That is standard deviation. Okay. So that is what is applied here. So how, if a price moves too much, if, uh, if price moves too much, if price creates a lot of big moves, that is when Bollinger Band will expand. So like for example, you can see somewhere around here. When price was in a range, then Bollinger Band was okay. When there were massive gap ups or when price was trending on the upward end, you can see that Bollinger Band expanded. Okay, Bollinger Band was expanding. Then again, market settled down, market came into a range, then Bollinger Band sort of contracted and then again, after that, you can see that there was a big fall. Bollinger Bank was expanding. So based on the volatility of the market, if market is more volatile, right? On the bullish side or on the bearish side, it does not matter. If market's volatility increases, then the Bollinger Band expands. If market's volatility decreases, then the Bollinger Band is squeezed in or it compresses, okay? So that is the concept of Bollinger Band. So it's basically a range of which the market volatility will line, right? So it, based on the volatility, it tries to determine the range of the market, okay? If uh, volatility increases all of a sudden, that is when we know that, you know, there is some activity in the market. So that is when we'll try to see if there is an overbought zone or an oversold zone, right? So that is how you can trade the reversals, okay? Similar to that, RSI, Relative Strength Index is an oscillator. Right, so it's one of the most common oscillators. How it works is it's just showing you the overall strength in each move. So it's just showing you the overall strength in each move. If the market is sideways, then RSI will also be range bound sideways. If market goes trending, then RSI might tend to break out or break down. So it will experience a breakout or a breakdown. So overall, you can track an uh, overbought zone or an oversold zone with the help of RSI as well. So for example, here, right, you can see that Bollinger Band pierced through, uh, sorry, uh, the price pierced through Bollinger Band somewhere around here. 
as soon as rsi as soon as rsi moved above 70 so around here this is when i know that it is creating a top market is creating a top now after that market did go up right so this was where you know the trend was actually happening but eventually you could see that the market came down so it won't have a hundred percent accuracy but whenever you do get a move that is when you will make decent return so that is the general idea so it does not work in highly volatile times or in highly uncertain markets but it will give you a nice move overall it will give you a nice decent move overall let's say if i go for a five minute time frame so this is like uh, an intraday time frame which uh, generally people use okay same thing if rsi is range bound let's look at some historical examples like for example here okay so i can see that the lower band of the rsi is being pierced by price so i can see that price candles are there right rsi below 60 or oh, not below 60 my bad uh, below 30 rsi is below 30 this showcases sort of an uh, over sold zone so this is an oversold zone i can see that market is about to create a bottom so as soon as the high of the previous candle is broken i will go for a bullish trade so i will enter a bullish trade somewhere around here at this point okay so let me just mark it up for you guys with a horizontal ray so i will enter at the high of this candle exactly okay where is my where is my candle okay my bad can i move it just a second okay so i will enter at the high of this candle and you can see that it has given a decent move for me. It has given a decent move. So I will square off, let's say based on RSI, if RSI moves to uh, above 50, whenever RSI moves above 50 or near 50, this is where I will square off. So I will square off maybe at the low of this candle or maybe at the closing of this candle, that is also fine. So at the closing of this candle, I will end, exit my trade. So I made decent returns from here to here. Let's see what the price range shows me. So let me just show you guys how much I made. Okay. All right. So from here to the closing point of here, let me see. Right. So it was decent, a 200 point move, uh, more or less a 200 point move. This is how you can capture those things. So easily you can identify the overbought as well as the oversold zones with the help of RSI. Let's see if I can go for a bearish example. Mm. Right, there is a bearish example somewhere around here. You can see that uh, market tried to pierce the upper Bollinger Band or the upper uh, moving average or the upper band of Bollinger Bands. Okay, market tries to pierce through it. I can see that RSI is moving above 70. Okay, RSI is being traded above 70. It's moving, it's moving, it's moving. As soon as the low of any candle is broken, I will enter a trade. So maybe I'll enter uh, somewhere around here. Maybe I'll enter somewhere around here at the low of this, at the low of this candle, right? When it is broken. And whenever RSI comes to around 50, I will square off. So I will square off maybe around here. So that is fine, okay? So let me show you guys the entry point and the exit point. This was my entry point. Okay, around here, this was my entry point. Okay, let me see if I go precise, this was my entry point. Okay, so on the low of this candle, this was my entry point. And when did RSI go to around 50? So RSI pierced 50 level around here. So maybe at the closing of this candle, this was also a decent move, not too big, right? Not a very big move, but you can see that it has moved really well okay so maybe from here to around here right so 84 point move this is where you could have captured so that is how uh, rsi and bollinger band works and you can trade reversals with the help of this okay so it's a very simple tool it's a very simple indicator for you guys whenever you are trading you can use this now what option strategy you can use so let's discuss a couple of option strategies because we are looking at the future price to get a particular view of the direction but we are always trading options because we don't want to pay up a lot of margin when trading futures okay so you can just go to the trading section and under trading section you will find strategy builder you will find options architect options architect is our own strategy builder okay and here you can go for 
different strategies. So I generally go for weekly expiries if I'm going on an intraday trade. So for intraday trade, you can just go for a long call or a long put because uh, you don't need to sell options. You don't need to write options. So you can just go for simple naked option buying on weekly expiries whenever you are using this on an intraday basis. If you're using RSI and Bollinger Band to trade reversals on a positional basis, in that sense, I always recommend going for some monthly expiry, right? So currently 31st July is the monthly expiry on Bank Nifty. Once you select the monthly expiry, you always select a debit spread. So it can be a bull call spread or on the bearish side, a bear put spread. So if you just click any of these strategies, let's say if I select a bear put spread, you can see it shows net debit. So it shows net debit. That means you have to go for a higher or slightly expensive call option. You have to buy call option or put option and you have to sell a slightly less expensive option. So generally what people do is buy an at the money option and sell an OTM option to be theta protected. So you can see at the money put option, it is showing you to buy and a slightly OTM put option. It is showing you to sell. So you can select your own strike prices because it's just giving you the next strike price there, but you select your own strike price, whatever you want. So let's say if I am uh, analyzing the current market scenario, let's say I go for a daily chart on Bank Nifty and I'm analyzing the current market scenario. So let me see a one day chart. Okay, one week, one day. Okay, so this is a one day chart on Bank Nifty. Okay. Based on it, I can see that, you know, Bank Nifty has just reversed. Bank Nifty has just reversed, but it has not reached the level of 50. It has not reached the level of 50. So there is a good chance that Bank Nifty could fall from here, at least till the level 50 of RSI is achieved. And then after that, you can uh, go for maybe a bullish trade as well. So that is how it works. Now, generally it gives you a decent move, but again, there was no piercing of Bollinger Band. So price did not try to pierce the Bollinger Band somewhere around here. So there is a good chance that, you know, market could go bullish as well. So as of now, I feel like the market should go bullish because it is trading near the higher side of the Bollinger Band and RSI is also not showing an oversold zone. So there is a good chance, oh, sorry, an overbought zone, my bad. It's not showing an overbought zone on RSI and it is showing that, you know, it's trading above the second high of the Bollinger Band. So there is a good chance that Bank Nifty you know, could go up from here. At least that's what the indicator is suggesting. So let's say if I'm going for a bullish trade, just for an example. So for a bullish trade, if I'm trading positionally, I'll go for the monthly expiry, which is 31st July. I'll go for a bull call spread. Okay. And based on bull call spread, based on maybe, you know, this levels, I could go and sell 53,500 maybe. 53,500. Would that be okay? Let's see. 53, 500 call option. Okay. Yeah. So this is the strategy that I would carry till the expiry. If market keeps on moving up, if Bank Nifty keeps on moving up, this will be the payoff. It, it will give you a decent reward to risk. So you can definitely go and trade this strategy. Okay. All right. So that is it for me. I hope you guys learned something new. Thank you so much for uh, watching this video. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, participating in all of these things. Uh, I hope that you guys keep the support. I have been loving it. It what keeps it what keeps me motivated. Uh, if you want to use Quantsap, you can find the link. The first link in the description will be for Quantsap. And in case if you need any help, uh, there is a helpline number on the top right corner. So you can just help yourself. Our support agents are always there. They will definitely help you. All right. All the best on your trading journey. And thank you so much for spending this time with me. Thank you guys.